Morning, morning to all of you online. Here we are at the start of this Christmas season, which we call Advent. This is Sunday number one of four of Advent, and then we arrive at Christmas. Let me just lean in a little bit to say this. No wasting time, John chapter one. Here we go. John chapter one on your screen. Those who know, I've been wasting time in my introduction. Be quiet, Des, start. John one. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him... All men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. I don't know about you, but those opening few verses, it was like light, 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 not light, light, it was light. So to say it literally, that opening text was lit. It was totally lit. There was so much going on. But the reality is this. Here we are in Advent. And Advent has got different translations, but it could mean coming events, preparation, expectation. Some of you even said Advent is the, to herald an arrival. It's to get ready for something. Expectations are there. And I like that word arrival because what we do in Advent is we focus in on four themes, hope, joy, peace, and love, and it's, we celebrate the arrival of hope, joy, peace, and love. But you're thinking, okay, we're celebrating the arrival of these words, these emotions, these attitudes. What is it? Here's what we have to do. The reality is the arrival that we are pointing towards has happened and we remember it happening. So we're looking forward to it kind of again. But the arrival is the arrival of the king and the king has hope and the king has joy and the king has peace and the king has love because the king is hope. The king is joy. The king is peace. The king is love. His name is Jesus. Jesus, and that's the hope, that's the joy, that's the peace, that's the love. And we go through this season about once a year, and we get to it, and we go, here we go again. And I am determined this year to not allow myself to go through the motions. I am determined this year to not allow opportunities to slide on by. I am determined to enter in and engage with the lyrics of songs we are only singing in December. I, I am prepared to fully encapsulate all that this was for, all that it is, who it is for, and dive in. Because I could present to you today a nice, warm, fuzzy Christmas story. And we all go, ah, oh, how sweet. We could do that, or we could really engage in these few weeks with a transformative opportunity. An opportunity that is for you and an opportunity that is for all who you connect with. And I really mean that. I think we just, we miss it, so we take it for granted, we miss the opportunity. And so this king comes, and how is it that a king in Jesus born into poverty, really, 
ends up a refugee really quickly. This story doesn't unfold very well, but here's the reality of it. How is it that he has hope, joy, love, peace? You can, oh, you can, maybe you know the answer, but how really? So, so let me take you to a few scriptures today. We'll, we'll start briefly. Um, Isaiah 7, 14. 700 years. Get your head around that, that amount of years. 700 years. That's a long time. 700 years before Jesus arrives in Bethlehem, the prophet Isaiah says this, and the virgin will be with child and she'll give birth to a son and he shall be given the name Emmanuel. Now we hear the name Emmanuel and those of you in and around church know Emmanuel has a meaning. Emmanuel means God with us. That's what Emmanuel means. So he's given this name God with us. I'll be honest, we let it just flow out of our mouths. God with us, Emmanuel, how good. But, but I'm going to intentionally just dive in and go, hang on a minute. Really? Is God with me? Is he with me? Factual answer, yes. Theological answer, yes. Doctrinal answer, yes. But as you are in going through life right now, do you have that reality that God is with us? He said it 700 years before. That's what his name would be. This is who he is. Is that true? In your current season, is that a reality? God with like with, not God from afar looking down, casting judgment. Not God looking down and going, I might influence a few people here and there. Not God passively saying, I hope they worship me. No, God sitting with, dwelling with. The John text, I've shared it before, what it said, and the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. I've said it before. I love the way Eugene Peterson translates that. And he said, and the word became a man and moved into my neighborhood. He just came right, bring it in personal. So today, in the midst of this hope, joy, peace, love, I'm going to sit on this word hope because it's a bit different. And hope is something that, oh, I hope so. There's a bit more to it than that. The only way that we can talk about hope is to look at it in the area of light and darkness. Isn't it fascinating that as humans, we have this phrase that maybe life right now is a bit dark, but we say, oh, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. It's interesting how we have these sayings that come about. At some point, somebody said it and somebody went, that's brilliant. And it stuck. I know there's light at the end of the tunnel because a tunnel is meant to be darkness. No light can get in. And the moment we enter a tunnel, we enter into a time of darkness. If you've been on a train and all of a sudden you enter a tunnel, it's like, whoa, there's this moment when you go to a theme park and there's an element of a a ride and it goes into a dark tunnel. You're, You're looking for the light. You're hoping the light's going to appear. There's light at the end of the tunnel. There's hope. And even we have this phrase that when things are going difficult and someone's a bit lost, run to the light. Run to the light. What is that? What is it that throughout human history we've been drawn to the light and yet the light shines darkness, shines brightest in darkness? It's fascinating. So the only way we can really engage this hope thing is for me to get up close personal with you. And I think the start of this season, for us to truly receive it, embrace it, live it out, do the invitation, the whole thing, the only way we can do it is to be honest with ourselves. A bit of a self-inventory and just go, where am I at right now? just to see where I am so I can know where I need to go, just to assess where I am. 
And in so doing, there are thousands of people in our community probably thinking, where am I right now? And where is hope for me? Before I ask you a couple of personal questions, this year for Christmas Eve, we're doing Christmas Eve at three and five that are identical, and then we have an 11 in the evening, at night, should we say, gathering we always do, which is super special, which is different. The three and five are identical. The 11 is different. But this year, we're doing Christmas Eve Eve as well. We're doing the Thursday at 7, which is the same as the 3 and 5 on the 24th, but on the 23rd, we're going to do the 7. Here's the why. Here's the obvious reason why. I don't know about you, but maybe the people you engage with, maybe at work or your friends or your family or your neighbors or at your gym or wherever you socialize, you go to them and say, hey, you know, why don't you come to church with me on Christmas Eve? And they go, we have plans. Because nearly all of you have already got plans for the 24th. You, maybe you have plans. Maybe those plans include coming here. Good choice. But maybe you have plans. People have plans. And so we want to reach people. We want to go out and say, hey, this is life-changing, eternally changing, life-impacting, transformative. Hey, do you want to come? And they go, I have plans. They're not like saying, oh, no, you're a weirdo. I don't want to be with you. They're just, they have plans. So we thought, ah, but the 23rd, the day before, at seven in the evening. Do you want to come? And some of you are thinking, but if I invite people to come on the 23rd, what do I do on the 24th? I have plans. I come to church on the 24th. Guess what? You can double dip. <laughs> double dip. Because your purpose for the 23rd is for everybody, including myself, who need to embrace and receive hope and joy and love and peace and the reality of the coming king. That's the purpose. So we get to be able to do that. But ideally, to start this season, you're not a great candidate inviting somebody if you yourself are boring. I'm going to go there in a minute. Sit with me. The reality is we want to be able to live with some hope in these days, days this week, and some joy, and some peace and love, and and be able to reach out to people and say, hey, you want to come? Are you prepared to do whatever it takes for some people to come? Maybe you should have a list of names right now. If you don't have a list of names right now, I don't know, go knock on some doors of people who live next door to you or whatever, but the list of people who you just know. The overwhelming majority of people in the valley will not be in church this Christmas. Fact. There's an opportunity we get to invite. Do whatever it takes to come. Hey, if they want to come 24th, awesome, but there's a 23rd, they can come. Maybe, I don't know. I'm prepared to do whatever it takes. There's some people I've got uh, in my mind I want to reach out to and go, hey, do you want to come? Do you want to come? Preacher's a bit sketchy, but outside of that, do you want to come? Is this what you, and whatever it takes. I said at nine o'clock, maybe go and pay for their dinner. That may be a bit too much, but you know, whatever it needs, just invite and come and see the opportunity for really what it is. But to start with, let's just get honest. Hope. Light in darkness. Can we just be honest? How you doing? Really, how you doing? It's one thing me get on here and just get all excited and fired up and yeah, 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 yeah. And some of you are thinking, Christmas season, I want, I want to get through it as fast as I can. I'm looking forward to getting to the other side. I'm looking forward to the year turning to 22 because 21 isn't one of those. That is fondness. How's it going? Maybe we're talking about light and darkness and you're going, yeah, I understand darkness. I understand darkness. I I really get it. I I did a bit of a self-inventory this week and just wrote down a bunch of words that will help for some of you. How's it going? Maybe you enter this season and you feel overwhelmed. Maybe you're just overwhelmed. There's a lot going to be busy and things to do and people to see and gifts to buy and you don't know how you're going to do that and what do you buy for people who don't need anything? And how you do that, and you put pressure on, and you feel a bit overwhelmed, and maybe there's travel involved, or maybe there's not, but you're feeling a bit overwhelmed. And you you fake it. I'm supposed to like it. It's all great. And I'm exhausted. Whatever. 
In the middle of that, some of you maybe have got some stress. It comes with that. Maybe this year has been so storm-filled that you're just bedraggled and disheveled. And it's just... <sighs> some of you are thinking it's already. Christmas is already here. I'm not ready. Like, I'm, I'm not ready. Uncertainty, regret, fear, despair. Some of you are just hanging on. Some of you are tired, hopeless. Some of you have been in a season of grief, still in a season of grief. And it's just hard to, to have some hope when things seem so hopeless. Isolation, loneliness, it's all very real, very, very real. But at the same time, some of you are just frustrated. Some of you are frustrated with other people in your life, frustrated with the state of the nation, frustrated with the gas prices, frustrated with whatever. Some of you just got, you're just frustrated. And that's pushing you towards a bit of anger. And here we are, the season of goodwill to all men, and you're like, Ugh. But then I'll lean into it again. Some of you are just flat out bored. You're bored. Here we are again. Same old, same old. Life's flatlined. Nothing's really changing. No light, no shade, just existence. Everybody's putting up lights everywhere. Interesting, isn't it? We just, we light everywhere and everything, wherever we can. Tonight when you come and we all gather, the whole point of us, and there's lights that will come on and there's some light in darkness and the, the sun has gone, but the light will rise and there's all that hope and joy. But for some of you, it's kind of a bit bored. Some of you are so comfortable, you've got no concerns and no worries, and as a result of which, you are flat out boring. And we're meant to be a people with some joy and some hope and some peace. And, and it's just, can we, let's just be honest. I think you need to just be honest for a moment, and where are you? I, I, I reflected this week, and you know what? When I look across various different things, there's a bunch of stuff that I'm just flat out disappointed in. Just disappointed. So let me go there a little personal. Raise your hands if you would, if you've been praying and in praying, you still got no answers. Not so many of you. Wow, I feel weird. I haven't got enough hands to put up. <laughs> Raise your hands if you would then. If in this sense of reaching out with hope and, and praying to God, you, you, you actually have an element of, I don't, it's not unanswered, it's, am I wasting my time? Am I wasting my time? Maybe God has answered and it's just, no, 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 no. Oh, I got an answer, but I didn't like it. Can we sit in disappointment? Maybe for some of you, there's been a time where you've maybe seen God answer prayers and you've seen breakthroughs and you've seen transformation and you've seen things come to pass and you're super excited, but you look at it and on the other side you go, but this didn't turn out good. Why not here? Why me? We need to sit in the honesty of it because in so doing, sitting in the honesty makes you relate to all people around us in this season. There is light. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And the purpose of hope is in the days ahead, there is hope. Why is there hope in the days ahead? It's not a hope so. It's because hope has a name. And the name has arrived. And his name is the King. And it's King Jesus. Hope is here. Hope is with us. So we can live not only hoping for something, but we live with hope. Hope is present. We don't have to live hopeless. Hope is present. Light is it's necessary because, again, I say it before, there is no such thing as darkness. Darkness is simply a word that we give for an absence of light. We call something that is absent of light dark. So by definition, we are drawn to the light because our identity needs light. With that in mind, as we lean into this, the reality is 
Why did those foreign guys who were called to go see Jesus, what did they follow? A star? We, we associate that the whole journey was nighttime because <laughs> they were following a star. And the reality is if we want to go stargazing, we can only do it at night. And the reality is the darker it is, the brighter the stars. And yet at the same time, according to Philippians chapter 2, the church, we, his children, are called stars. He says, and I want you to shine like stars in the universe. As you hold out this hope, that's your role. What's the purpose? In darkness, shine. Therefore, we are called to engage the darkness with light. That's a role. So we have a purpose. We have a function. This season, wherever we go, we carry hope. Probably. If Christ is in you, the hope of glory is in you. You take hope into wherever you go. We get to extend it. Now, let me just sit with this a little bit just to help because it's so, so true in this season, being honest. Psalm 23. You don't often get Psalm 23 at Christmas time. But here's the reality of hope. And the reality of Emmanuel. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, all of that. Verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. We could just go boom. But we shouldn't. No, it's even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. For you are with me. There's a reason that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though my situation, my circumstances, not easy, pain-filled, grief-filled, difficulty, even though I walk through them, I will fear no evil because of Emmanuel, God with us. For you are with me. Even... Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, how do you have a shadow without light? You don't. You need light for a shadow. So it was a shadow of death. There is something there to say. Even in your darkest moment, light is there. Light is there even in your darkest moment. Hope is there. It is present. It is present. And it's okay to be honest, have a self-inventory and go, this is where I am right now, but even though this is where I am, he is with me. He is with me. I don't have to get into any intellectual reasoning. There is a reality and that my soul knows so well. He is with me. Hope is here. Uh, I'll go back to Isaiah again, just very briefly, chapter 9. Isaiah 9, verse 2. 700 years before Jesus comes, this prophecy is declared. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Dawn. Sunrise. We have the promise of hope every single day because the sun rises. And the sun rises, S-U-N rises. But our greatest hope is because the sun, S-O-N, rises. And we've got to intrinsically connect the two. Hope. Let me sit with this. Maybe you're all out of hope or maybe you think, I have no hope. And then it got to the phrase, where is my hope? What's our only hope? And then I'll just share this with you. It's not super spiritual. In my preparation for this, when I went, what's my only hope? My brain went to Star Wars. <laughs> just need to tell you, okay? If you need to pray for me, that's fine. But my brain went to Star Wars. Stick with me, it's worth it. It went to Star Wars. If you've never seen Star Wars, this moment right now, I don't know, listen to some music. But it went to Star Wars. 
The OG original Star Wars movie was episode four, but the OG original episode of Star Wars movie was called Star Wars A New Hope. So I'm like, oh, here we go. And it also went with what's my only hope? Where's my only hope? Oh, Star Wars A New Hope. That's not where it came. My, my thing didn't come from that. I was thinking about my friend R2-D2. He's my friend. I, there's a whole story there. I've met him. Me and him were buddies. He's part, anyway, by the by. So R2-D2. I was thinking about my buddy R2-D2 because in Star Wars A New Hope, Princess Leia thinks it's all over. She's all out of hope. And she's hopeless and she's about to be captured by the prince of darkness, Darth Vader himself. She's about to be taken. This rebellion to bring their freedom is not looking good. And she sees this droid, R2-D2, and she says, there is still one out there. There is a Jedi out there. Obi-Wan Kenobi. And so she gets some message that she records to put into this droid R2-D2. And the message is simply this. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. And she puts this message, the video message, and she implants it into the droid in the hope she's going to be captured, but the message is preserved. And you never know, one day, somehow, some way, R2-D2 will be able to project that message to those who need to hear it, preferably Obi-Wan Kenobi, to say, hey, help. Was she hope-filled? No, it was her only hope. What have I got to lose? Let's just do this. But I'm going to still create an opportunity for hope. She was desperate, and that's where it is. Some of you are desperate for hope. And you're like, help me. Where is hope? Where's my only hope? Where's my only hope? It's not in a Jedi. As much as I'd like to believe it, they're not real. Where's my only hope? Hope has a name. And if we can't lean in to hope having a name and hope being a king and the king being Jesus, there's no hope at all. But the king is coming and the king is here. And the king's going to come again. We have hope. And it may be our only hope, but it's the only hope we need. I'm going to take us to Romans 12. Again, not traditional Christmas text today, but this is so important. Romans 12, I could do the whole chapter, but we'd never get lunch. Verse 12 only of chapter 12. Romans 12, verse 12. Be joyful in hope, okay? Patient in affliction, faithful in in prayer. I looked at that and thought, be joyful in hope. Why is it giving me a posture of hope? Why do I need to have be joyful in hope? Why can't I just be, have hope? Why do I need that posture? Why do I need to be joyful in hope? What, what's with the, the mood of hope? The attitude of hope? No, be joyful in hope. But if I'm lacking hope, Joy doesn't spring to mind. If I'm lacking hope, I'm a little bit down. I'm hoping for things to turn around. Joy isn't the natural posture of I hope so, and joy isn't a natural posture of me needing hope. But it says be joyful in hope. Some translations say rejoice in hope. In hope be rejoicing. Paul said later on in one of his books, hey, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Be joyful in hope. Here's what I've just narrowed it down to. Joyful in hope means this. Just keep praising. Just keep praising. 
That's joyful in hope. I'm being joyful in hope, and hope has a name, King Jesus. Just keep praising. Just keep praising, because God is with us. I don't know about you, but the presence of God is much more dynamic in my experience when I pray, when I praise. There is something all of a sudden. It only takes a sentence. It only takes a song. But when I fix and I go joyful in hope, the atmosphere around me changes. I don't allow myself normally to listen to Christmas music till post Thanksgiving. However, this year I was preparing for, for this weekend pre Thanksgiving. And I'm preparing so the Christmas tunes came on. And there is something beautiful about engaging in some of the lyric of it all and listening to new versions and different artists adding their spin to songs we always sing and different tags that get added to it. I'm like, oh, so good. The joyful in hope was easy. I remember Wednesday, I was getting ready for Wednesday night and getting ready for today. I'm like, oh, here we go. And I was listening to a new version of, oh, come on, you faithful. And they tagged something on the end. And I was like, oh, that's so good. And as I engaged in it, I went, whoa. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. It's like something just shifted. And I was like, oh, so good. Then I listened to another one, and, and they were singing a traditional Christmas song. And then at the end, they went and tagged the All Hail King Jesus that we sing here. And I was like, of course. All hail King Jesus in the midst of him coming as a servant king. I was like, yes. It was like, yes. Be joyful in hope. Just keep praising. I don't feel like it. I don't care. Just keep praising. Just keep praising. What is playing? What is doing? Just keep praising. Just keep praising. Just keep praising. Make it intentional and fill the room and get the words out and declare it. The truth. So, so good. Word of the Father now in flesh appearing. Oh, come, let us adore him. I've got an opportunity. Or I can go, no, I don't want to. I get to approach him. And then he goes on and says, patient in affliction. See the honesty again? I know so many of you this year, this affliction is like putting it mildly. Physically, relationally, emotionally, financially, just affliction. But he's saying, in it, be patient in it. So if joyful and hope means just keep praising, patient in affliction is just keep waiting. Just keep waiting. There is something powerful about waiting. It's a faith posture. I'm waiting. There's an expectation. It doesn't say quit. It says be patient. I'm waiting. It's coming. It's almost like you're at a train station waiting for the arrival of the train. I'm waiting. I know it's coming. And I know he's coming because those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. There is something powerful about waiting. If you're expectant, there's a posture. So in your current affliction, God knows it. Just keep waiting. Keep praising. And while you're praising, keep waiting. And then it says, be faithful in prayer. Just keep talking. Just keep praying. Faithful in prayer. Our week of prayer that kicks off tomorrow at 6 a.m., Monday's pretty booked out right now. You go online, you book a one-hour slot. You, book, you find the openings and you book a one-hour slot. If some of you struggle to sleep, 2 a.m. is wide open a few days. I'm pretty confident. You book a one-hour slot, you'll get sent what to pray for. You don't have to pray through everything you get sent. You go where your heart is and you pray. And the whole posture of this is you're not on your own, although you are on your own, is that somebody has handed it on to you because they've been praying and you pick it up. 
for the next hour. And then when you finish, the next person's going to pick it up. We have a non-stop 24 hours a day for seven days, a crescendo of the heart of Grace Community Church lifting up their prayers to the throne of heaven. Non-stop. We don't let it stop. And we lift it and we lift it and you get to be part of it. Maybe the same time of day, go click, 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 do that. If you go there and you find, but my time's been taken, pick another time, you'll get set what to pray for, do that one time, and, then, and you, know, you can pray as much as you want, all right? But to get the information, you have to click an open spot, all right? So don't give it, oh, I want to do that time, and somebody's already taken it. Pick another open spot and do it. From Monday all the way through to Sunday. Things will change. You, you will be impacted. You will be impacted. Joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Just keep praying. And what I want to do right now, though, is lean in to this honesty thing and spend a bit of, just a short amount of time praying for many of you right now. Because when we think about hope, I know it's really hard for some of you. And I know you're looking at the year that's just gone by and it is disappointing and hard and painful and or fill in the blank. And so there's two things I want to do to finish. One of them is going to be really positive lifting out, but one is right where you are. If you are desperate for hope, Life feels more dark than it does light. You need a visitation of hope in your soul for today. Let's go with today. And certainly for this season. I could be practical and say surround yourself with people who fill you with hope. That's good. But the best thing is for us to invite the one who is hope to sit right with you in your very present difficulty an ever-present help in time of need. And so if this morning you need a fresh outpouring of hope just to get you through this season, let's go ahead and ask for that. And the Lord will provide. This is how we're going to do it. If that's you, and it's really hard right now, all I want to do is, as I'm praying, just have your hands open like that in front of you on your lap, ready to receive something. Physical posture does affect. If you need some hope, and maybe it's somebody else in your world that you know it's hopeless for, you're asking to be hope for them. But for yourself, it's just a relationship, a situation, whatever it may be, you, you know. I don't have to go on. So if that's you, just just join me. I, I'm, I'm ready for a fresh dose of hope. I'm ready for a fresh outpouring of hope. So if that's that, just put your, hand, your palms open in front. Let me lead us together as we pray and ask the Lord. King Jesus, you are hope. You are the light, and you are the light in the darkness. Come. Holy Spirit, we know you are the comforter, the counselor, our very present presence of the Lord with us. So we ask, hope, come. Come and reveal hope into our soul right now. Bring your comfort, Lord, to those who are grieving. Bring your strength to those who feel weak. Bring your provision for those who are desperate. Bring your forgiveness for those living with regret. Bring your healing for those encountering pain. And hope has a name. You are hope, King Jesus. King Jesus, come afresh into our lives today.
And we pray that your hope, Lord, would it flow through us. May we, in our pain, still invite others to encounter your hope. Lord, we lift the names of the people who we know, who we really want to see them following you. We lift those names, Lord. Would you cause us to reach out? And just where you are, just allow the reality of the very presence of God, because he is Emmanuel, God with us, to quite literally sit with you. May his grace surround you. His peace comfort you. His love overwhelm you. And as a result, may hope arise. There is a light, and his name is Jesus. And in his name we pray. Amen.